S1 and S2. You shouldn't hear anything extra. Remember the fancy word for extra is adventitious. And our extra heart sounds are S3, S4, and then we can also have something called a murmur. So starting off with just those normal heart sounds. S1 is when your mitral and tricuspid valves close. So those are those atrioventricular valves, the valves between the atria and the ventricles. They close during systole and they make that lub sound. Then after they close, naturally diastole comes next and your aortic and pulmonic valves close. That makes the dub sound. Let's listen to it. If you hear anything other than that, nice love dub, it's extra adventitious. S3 is a sloshing noise that would come after that S2 dub you just heard. It's caused by fluid overload. So think heart failure, or sometimes we hear it at the end of pregnancy. That's a really hypervolemic state. It sounds like Kentucky. I used to think that the whole S3 was the word Kentucky, but no, it's just that end Kentucky. It's the E. So all three love dub S3, all three heart sounds are now going to make up the word Kentucky, Kentucky. So if you listen to the heart and you're like, hey, it kind of sounds like it's saying Kentucky, you might actually just be hearing S1, S2, S3. Now, if you listen to the heart and it's like, whoa, it kind of sounds like it's saying Tennessee, Tennessee, you might actually be picking up on S4 instead of S3. And that means it's an extra beat that's coming before S1 instead of after S2, which I mean, to just you and me listening with our stethoscope, how, how are we supposed to identify that? That's super hard, right? It's going to take an EKG and an echo to really determine. But they sound a little bit different. S4 is caused by a stiff, stiff, stiff atria trying to push that blood forward. So think hypertension, aortic stenosis, cardiomyopathy. Those are more likely to cause that S4 where it's going to sound like Tennessee, Tennessee, versus S3, volume overload, is going to sound more like Kentucky, Kentucky. Now, murmurs, that's a whole different story. I put that in blue because it's only sometimes a problem. In kids, murmurs are often benign. All right, in adults, a little bit more rare to have a murmur and it not be a problem. But children oftentimes have benign murmurs that they grow out of. So if you're in a peds rotation and you hear a murmur, don't automatically freak out. Yes, it could be a problem. They could have a heart defect, but it doesn't automatically mean, whoa, big red flag. What it means is that somewhere in the heart, there is turbulent blood flow that's producing an audible noise, a whooshing noise. In adults, most likely it's regurgitation or stenosis that has allowed this whoosh, this turbulent blood flow that we can hear. Let's listen to it. All right, that was a lot whooshier than the quick, crisp, lub-dub of S1, S2. So if you hear that, think murmur. And anytime you hear one of these extra noises, assess your client. How do they look? Do they seem like they're in trouble? What are their ABCs? How are their perfusion? And that's going to tell you if you're in trouble or not, right? If this lecture was helpful for you, we've got plenty more where that came from. 
head over to archerreview.com and subscribe to one of our many affordable packages to study for nursing school, the NCLEX, and beyond. We'll see you there, future nurses.